Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can run a Caspa node. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because the last time I made this video was over a year ago. And I do want to show you in this video three different ways that you can run a node. And it's going to go from easiest to hardest. That way you can choose which way you want to run it based on your needs. Now, before we get into it, let me show you guys the specs of hardware that you should use if you're going to be running a node. So the minimum hardware that you should use is a four core CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes. Now this is the minimum and mind you that if you do run a Caspa node, it may take almost under just under 24 hours to sync up to the network. Now recommended hardware is a six core CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage. And this will just make it a little bit more faster. And then future proof is an eight core CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM with one terabyte of storage. Now, the reason why I say future proof is because in the future, Casper is going to be upgrading its blocks per second to be a lot more than just 10. And that means that the storage requirement over time will become a little bit more bigger. So it would be nice to have one terabyte and that way you're not getting close to reaching the max amount of storage whenever Caspa starts to grow. Now, if you're interested in acquiring dedicated hardware like a mini PC so that you can run your node in your own home, I do recommend this mini PC, which I personally have myself. There's a link down below to this Amazon link and it is an affiliate link. And so if you do purchase anything through this link on Amazon, I do receive a commission and I greatly do appreciate that. But this device right here has eight core CPU, one terabyte storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM. All right, so the first way that you can run a node is by simply going to Caspa's GitHub where the code lives. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to where it says releases. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're on the latest version. And then you're gonna to wanna to select the file that matches your operating device. Personally, I'm running Windows, so I'm gonna be selecting the win64.zip file. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this to my desktop. And then this is going to be a zip file. And I already have made a Casper folder here. And what I'm gonna do is extract all the contents from this folder into my Casper folder. Once you extracted all the contents into your folder that you made for Casper related stuff, you're gonna see three applications here. Now the application to run your node is going to be Caspad. Caspa wallet is actually a command line interface wallet that is able to connect to your node so that you can actually send transactions, create addresses, and even verify the supply of Caspa and also verify an address and how much Caspa it holds against your own node. And then lastly, you have the Rothschild application. Now you will most likely never use this application unless you are testing. A Rothschild application simply generates transactions on the network and this is mainly used on testnet to stress test the network. So you are most likely not going to be using this but it is good to know what it is. Now you could just double click this application if you want to start the node but if you do this the node will not start with your utxo index being enabled and this is crucially important if you want to use your node to solo mine or if you want to use your node to run this caspa wallet so what we're going to do is make sure that utxo index is on to do that i'm going to right click the application and then just click copy then i'm going to go to my command line interface and paste what i just copied into it then I'm going to type space dash dash UTXO index, and then I'm going to click enter. After doing that, you can verify that the UTXO index is on when you actually see this line right here. And the last word is UTXO index. You can also verify what version you're running to make sure that you are on the latest version. Now, depending on your hardware, your node may take upwards to under 24 hours or maybe just a few hours to sync up to the network. You will know that your node is fully synced up to the network when you start seeing lines that say accepted blocks. Once you see those lines occurring rapidly, you know that your node is finished syncing to the network. The next way that you can run your node is through a desktop application called Caspa NG. Now Caspa NG has a built-in wallet. It also has a built-in node so that you can run your own node. And then also has this nice DAG visualizer that you can watch 
while your application is running. The links to everything I discussed here is going to be down below in the description, but you're going to want to head over to the binary releases of Casper and G, which is going to be a GitHub link. And then you're going to want to select the file according to your operating system. I'm going to go ahead and select the Windows one. I'm going to put this to my desktop and then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to extract all of the contents out of the zip file into our Caspa folder. Once you do that, you're going to get two applications, but the only application you need to worry about is Caspa NG. And then you're just going to want to double click this application that says Caspa NG, more info, run anyway. And then the application will run. And then now you are on Caspa NG. Now I want to show you guys the setup for this so that you guys are actually able to make sure it is running correctly. So for the settings, you're going to want to of course, select mainnet because you do not want to be running a node for a testnet unless you're going to be doing some testing. And then for the Caspa peer to peer node and connection, if you want to make sure that you're running your own node and you're not connecting to a public node, you need to select integrated daemon. If you select remote, this is for you to connect to a random public node that exists or you can connect to a custom node that you may be running somewhere else or something like that. But if you want to run your own node, you're going to want to select integrated daemon and then you're going to want to click apply. And then it's going to just show the change log. You click close. And then now if we head over to the settings, you're going to want to make sure a couple things are enabled. So make sure that you do allow this so that the node will start. If you click the logs here, you're going to see that automatically Caspa NG does run the UTXO index. So that is actually very good because now if this node is running and you want to run a, another application to verify your address against your node, you can do so right away. If you want to solo mine while this node is running, this node will automatically be ready. Now, the way you know your node is fully synced to the network is when you start to see a bunch of accepted blocks on the logs of your node. Once you see that, then you know that it is fully done. Now on Casper NG, it does show you what stage of syncing you are in. So right now it's stage one of five. Once it is fully synced up, this cloud is actually going to turn green. And then also if you go to the block DAG visualizer, you will start seeing blocks in a DAG forming. So we know that our node is not synced. It also tells us down here, please wait for the node to sync. Now, if you want a more in-depth video explaining Caspa NG and showing you how the wallet works and all that kind of stuff, I do have a video for that called Caspa KNG Wallet Guide. And the link for this video will be down below in the description. So the last and most difficult way to run a Caspa node is actually going to be clipped from this video that I made in the past because it actually has a really good walkthrough of how to do this. But this is going to be running a node by building it from source completely. First off, we're going to head over to the GitHub for Rusty Caspa. And when you head to the link that will be down below in the description, you can scroll all the way down below where it says Caspa on Rust. And you're going to be able to see the installation guides for each operating system. In this video, we're going to be doing this for Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and kind of just go in order of what it's telling me to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install Git for Windows. So I'm going to just go ahead and click the link right here and then just click download. And then this will just simply download the program for me to install. So then I'll put it to my desktop and go ahead and allow it to run on my computer. Just follow all the prompts here. Okay, once you've successfully downloaded Git, you can actually check to see if it downloaded by going to your terminal and then just putting here Git version and hitting enter. And you can see that a Git version does pop up here. So we have successfully downloaded Git. Next, you're going to want to install the protocol buffers and add the bin directory to your path. So the first thing we're going to do is download the protocol buffers. It's going to be a zip file right here. Then what we're going to do is just simply put this to our desktop. Once this is on our desktop fully downloaded, it's going to be a zip folder. We're going to go ahead and make a new folder called TN11. And this is just for testnet 11. And we're going to go ahead and put that here and right click on the zip folder, click extract all, and then browse to your desktop and put it in the testnet 11 folder. Next, you're going to click start and then search for environment variables. And this should pop up pretty much right when you start typing this out, but it says edit the system environment variables. You're going to click that 
and it's going to give you this little window right here. You'll then click environment variables down below here. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is click where it says path. And then where it says path, you're going to want to click edit right here. The next thing you want to do is click browse. And then you're going to want to browse to the bin folder that is within testnet 11. So this is currently in my desktop. I'm going to go to TN 11 right here, and then I'm going to just click bin that folder right there and click OK. And then I'm going to click OK one more time here. Click OK one more time over here and then just click OK there. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and go back into your terminal and then go ahead and type this command. So it's going to be P R O T O C space dash dash version. And then after you hit enter, you should get a version number. The next thing we're going to do is install LLVM. We're just going to go ahead and click that right there, put it to our desktop as well. And then once it pops up on our desktop, we're just going to go ahead and double click it and start the download process. You may get this dialog box. You can just go ahead and click more info and click run anyway. Then you're going to get the setup window. You're going to go ahead and click next here. Click I agree. And then when you get this dialog box right here, it says do not add LLVM to the system path. Make sure that you select add LLVM to the system path for all users and then click next next install and then it'll install this to your computer next we're going to have to install rust toolchain so we're going to go ahead and click this and once you get to this page you're going to be able to click this right here and then you can put this to your desktop now if you try to click this it's not going to work so if i click this right now it's going to say right here, Rust requires a linker and Windows API libraries, but they don't seem to be available. These components can be acquired through a Visual Studio installer. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. So next, you're going to want to search for Visual Studio download. And then it should pretty much be the first option right here for Microsoft download Visual Studio tools. You can install it for free. So you just click the community version right here, free download. And then it's going to go right over here to our desktop as well. Once it gets to our desktop, you're just going to double click and start allowing it to download to your computer. Once it finishes downloading, you're going to get this window here. You're just going to want to scroll down and select desktop development with C++ and then just click install. All right. Once it's downloaded, this is going to pop up. You can go just go ahead and exit out of this and this as well. Then you can go ahead and go back to the rust up that you had downloaded here. And then it's going to give you this new dialog box, which all you have to do is just click enter to start the download. OK, rust is now installed and all you have to do is just press enter again to continue. This will close the terminal. And then if we go back into the terminal and just make a brand new one here, you can literally just put rust up and then dash dash version. And then you can see here that says rust up 1.27.1. So you successfully have rust now on your computer. The next thing you're going to want to do is install this right here by just copying and pasting this into your terminal. That's how pretty much the next steps are going to be here. So you're just going to search for your terminal here and then I can just right click that, click enter, and then it's going to just start downloading what is needed here. All right, once that's downloaded, you're going to want to go ahead and copy and paste the next line here and then just head back to your terminal, paste that in there. And then it's just going to do that next part very quickly here. And then that's pretty much it. Now you can just basically get clone the rusty Caspa code and we're just going to click paste anyway. And then now we're just cloning rusty Caspa straight into here. So now you can actually run a mainnet node. Then we can go ahead and run our mainnet node. Make sure that you copy this line right here that has the UTXO index. Make sure you are in the Rusty Casper directory. Paste that line in there and click enter. This will now start your node. And now anytime that you want to start your node, you need to make sure that you are in the Rusty Casper directory. And then you copy and paste this line right here into your command line interface. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And before we go, if you have not considered getting yourself a Tandrum wallet, they do have these exclusive Casper cards that you can acquire. And this is a great way to hold your Casper offline and off exchanges. If you use the code Casper Silver at the checkout, you will receive 10% off your order and I will receive a commission for this. And I greatly do appreciate it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here. 
And as always, don't be average, be different.